Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Bustamante, and in this video I want to talk about some different ways that we select in natural selection for certain traits, right? So we know that selection acts on a trait and that affects survival and reproduction. There are kind of three ways we can undergo selection. Predation selection, physiological selection, or sexual selection. So let's talk about the first one which is really predation selection, maybe the most obvious, right? Acting on a predator or prey. What are those behaviors or habits that either the predator have, say if you're a cheetah, you can run really fast, makes it more likely that you're gonna catch your prey, uh, or that a prey has, right? Um, maybe they're very camouflaged, they can avoid their prey, they travel in packs, right? What are these habits and traits that allow you to survive? And based on those that you ha exhibit, right, um, will contribute to who gets selected, basically who lives and dies, right, and who is able to go on and reproduce. Camouflage is one of them, um, blending in, mimicry. Uh, a lot of monarch butterflies are actually kind of poisonous and not good for organisms to eat, so sometimes we see lots of butterflies that kind of look like them to avoid uh, being eaten and survive. Speed, defenses, chemical and physical, maybe you put off some really strong tastes or uh, hot or some sort of toxic thing so organisms don't want to eat you. Example of predation selection. We can also have physiological selection. I kind of like to think about this as the general health, right? Are you healthy? Can you gather food? Can you process efficiently oxygen, food, water? Can you use it, right? Are you, do you have some disease resistance? Are you able to be, have protection from injury or biochemical versatility within you? So I kind of think about this just in general. We sort of think of this as your general health, right? Do things function in your body or in your organism the way they should? And finally, we have sexual selection, right? Which most of the time mating is not actually just totally random, right? Mates are typically selected in the wild based on certain traits. Maybe they have really fancy feathers. Um, if you're a male peacock or hummingbird, you have certain coloration that's really bright to attract a mate to you. Uh, go ahead and watch this video on the blue-footed boobies and how they have their feet that are really blue and how they do their little dance to attract their mate, for example, when we're done here. Uh, so attractiveness, then fertility of your gametes, right? Are they likely to survive and live? And then successful rearing of offspring. There are kind of two options. You can either have a lot of offspring and hope that they live, or you can take really good care of the few offspring that they have in order to assure their survival throughout time. So this is where I like to say, go ahead and thank your parents for helping you get to this point and taking such good care of you so you live. What does this result in? Well, this really results in us seeing population shift in one way to another. It can shift towards one end if it gets selected that way. It can get shifted towards the middle. We call stabilizing selection because it's like the average, so to speak, if you will. Or we can have disruptive selection, which kind of separates it into two based on how those traits get selected in different populations. I hope this was helpful and have a great day.